Well, here comes December 1st and winter has started again. The new year is approaching and for Rick, today is his own special day his birthday. He's turned seven, which means he's quite grown up, almost a teenager, not a preschooler anymore. However, there's no joy in this for him today because there won't be a celebration. Mom is sick. There's no time for festivities or fun. The boy went out for a walk alone because there's no strength left to stay at home and there's no one to walk with. No one to hold his hand, no one to call out to him, tell him to walk faster or quieter, or scold him for taking off his mittens or eating snow. So he walks down the street with mittens on, not eating snow. He knows it's not allowed, and it's not tasty either. Nothing is tasty when mom is sick, and she's sick almost always, despite promising to get better, but it only gets worse for her. Maybe if she stayed in the hospital, or if they found a medicine that made things easier, everything would be fine. Rick would grow a little more and he would help even more. He would go to school, study better and faster than everyone, become a doctor, and cure his mom. Meanwhile, the city is already adorned for the new year. A large Christmas tree is being set up in the square. Soon, they will hang ornaments on it, and colorful lights will sparkle. But will they have a Christmas tree at home? If mom gets better, then yes. New Year is still far away a whole month. In that time, things could improve, although, mom has been sick for a long time. He can hardly remember her being healthy. They even wanted to take her to the hospital, but she didn't go because where would they leave Rick? Now, both mom and the neighbor are taking care of him, bringing groceries, cooking soup, and potatoes when mom can't even stand. But sometimes she manages to get up, walk to the kitchen, and sit down, unable to catch her breath, all pale and sweaty. Who invented these illnesses anyway, and every year mom gets worse. Mrs. Taylor, the neighbor, often says they should send Rick to a 24-hour daycare and let her focus on getting better. But would mom agree to that? No, Mrs. Taylor, how could I live without him? I only move for Rick's sake. He's my main medicine and my doctor, and without him getting up in the morning would be pointless. Hearing these words, Rick indeed felt strong, capable of supporting his mom. When she almost stopped getting up, he would go out by himself, to the store for bread or milk, and sometimes to the pharmacy for medicine. Sometimes he would go even further, just because seeing the same thing all the time got boring. Besides, he believed that one day, returning from a long walk, he would find his mom healthy and cheerful. But nothing like that had happened yet. Passing by beautiful shop windows, the boy suddenly stopped in front of one, the most wonderful of all. There were displayed cakes of all kinds, all sizes and colors, white, chocolate, and multicolored. Some looked like baskets with fruit, while others resembled flower beds with flowers. Oh, if only mom were nearby. They would definitely buy one, even the smallest one, and a big one too. Mom bakes delicious cakes herself. Maybe not as beautiful, but tasty. Everything mom made was delicious. Even the simplest pie with potatoes or pancakes. But if she can't, why not buy one? The boy stood still in front of the miraculous shop window, mentally choosing a birthday cake for himself and imagining how it would look on the table in their room. How happy mom would be she'd eat a piece, then another, look at her son in surprise and say, Oh Rick, I don't feel any pain anymore. Let's go for a walk choose new toys for the Christmas tree, different gifts, I want a beautiful dress. And they would go happy and healthy quickly, so that no one would think that not long ago their home was so sad and quiet. Sophia, the owner of the pastry shop, noticed the frozen boy by the window. It wasn't surprising. Children often stopped at her window, but usually adults quickly led them away or were drawn into the shop attracted by Sophia's culinary art. But this little one stood for a minute, two, three. The owner got distracted by another customer, then looked at the window again. The boy was still standing there, all alone. He must have not noticed when his mom left, Sophia thought. It's not surprising, but how could a mother not notice that her child was not there? True, there's a jewelry store nearby, but even the sparkle of diamonds can't make a woman not notice that she no longer holds a little warm palm in her hand. 
The heart squeezed painfully again. But it's okay this pain has become familiar. Sophia got distracted again and looked out the window. The boy was still standing there, gazing at the cakes. No, this is too much. Something is clearly wrong with the child. Maybe he needs help? Sophia threw on a warm scarf and went outside. Hello, boy. Why are you here alone? Where's your mom? Did you get lost? No, the child replied modestly. I know where I live. I'm just looking. The cakes are so beautiful. I've never seen anything like this. Are they all real or just for show? They're real, little one. Do you want to buy something? The boy shrugged. She felt that the cold was starting to penetrate to his bones, and he seemed to be freezing. Come into the shop, warm up. I'll treat you, the woman said. In the pastry shop, she seated the boy at a table, poured tea, and put a piece of the most beautiful cake on a plate. The boy happily started eating. So, is it delicious? Sophia asked with a smile. Incredibly delicious. I've never tasted anything like this. If that's not enough, I can bring more later. My mom and I have money. Why do you need a whole cake? Are you inviting friends or siblings over at home? No, I'm alone with my mom and I won't invite anyone. It's my birthday today, but my mom is sick and we can't have guests. Medicines aren't helping her, but maybe this cake can save her. What if it's magical? It happens that delicious food helps people recover. Her heart tightened once again. Sophia was familiar with the feeling of helplessness in the face of illness. It's despair when you can only hope for a miracle. Even as an adult woman, she found it unbearable to hope for magic when there were no other options. And for that little boy. Oh, these cunning beggars muttered a woman arranging sweets. They come up with anything to elicit tears and ask for something. Your mom's sick, and it's your birthday, all at once. We've treated you that should be enough. The kid clearly doesn't belong here. Well dressed. I don't know what parents teach their children. Sophia paid no attention to these words. And where's your dad or grandparents? What's your name? Rick. We don't have anyone. It's always been just my mom and me, and a neighbor an old lady helps us but she's not family, just lending a hand. Okay wait, don't go anywhere. Sophia went to the utility room, packed the most beautiful cake into a box, and brought it to the boy. Here, take it. Happy birthday to you and I wish your mom a speedy recovery. Tell her she has a very good son, she said with a choked voice. If only mine were the same right now, echoed in Sophia's mind. Thank you so much, Miss the Little One beamed with happiness. Take some money. Through tears, Sophia saw a small amount in the little palm. No, it's a gift for you and your mom, she said softly. The boy took the box carefully and left, looking back at the doorstep with a smile, hope shining in his face. Well, he played you well. You negotiate for a deal in no time a customer shook her head. I won't haggle good deeds never go unpunished, replied Sophia. Yep. That's how the kind ones end up in trouble. Woman gathered her purchases, thanked, and left. It was evening, time to close the bakery. After finishing her work, Sophia decided to take a break right there. She brewed tea, cut herself a piece of the same cake she gave the little visitor, and once again delved into memories of events from five years ago that shattered her life. Yes, once her adult life began so happily, Sophia received a good education, married the man she loved, a caring and promising partner. They started their own business, and then their son was born, the most beloved and wonderful boy. What more could one wish for? It seemed like nothing, until one day, something strange began to happen with their son. They visited doctors, and very soon it turned out that the boy was sick, he had cancer, and there was likely no salvation. They as a couple were willing to do anything for their child, but they were powerless in terms of both money and connections. The boy was fading away before their eyes. Sophia spent hours and days by her son's bedside, but her love was also helpless. A year of despair ended with the death of the boy and the shattering of their entire life. The grief was immense, but Sophia and her husband couldn't share it. 
Each withdrew into their own shell of pain, experiencing the tragedy alone. They didn't become enemies, didn't hate each other, they just couldn't be together. Less than a year later, they drifted apart. Forgive me, Sophia, but this will only make things worse for both of us. You can't build a relationship on grief, her husband calmly said. She looked at his hair, now streaked with silver threads, and agreed, You're right, it'll be easier for me alone. Easier or not, continuing was simply unbearable. Their love faded along with their child, they didn't even meet at the expensive grave anymore. Now they say that her ex-husband has another family, and Sophia has only a grave, a bakery, and a constant ache in her heart. She couldn't even think about the possibility of starting a new life and having more children. Sophia thought for a long time that she wouldn't survive what had happened. It seemed like the ground was splitting beneath her feet, but as time passed, Sophia began to understand that there could be something more, if not a happy life, at least something meaningful to the world and people. Not her own business she already ran a bakery, just something humanly necessary. However, the feeling of fullness of life did not come, and her heart still squeezed in pain at the sight of a child the same age as her son could have been. The next such boy was seven-year-old Rick, whose story deeply touched Sophia. Perhaps the boy felt a closeness to the kind woman who had taken his mother's story so close to heart. Perhaps that's why, in his most fearful hour Rick ran not just anywhere, but to that same bakery. It was morning. Sophia was again standing behind the counter, arranging fresh goods. There were almost no customers at this hour, and suddenly a trembling voice said, Miss, hello. Sophia leaned down, saw the boy, immediately recognized him, and shuddered with concern. Tears streamed down the child's cheeks. What happened, little one? Do you remember me? You gave me a cake. I remember, of course, Rick, but why are you crying? I don't know what happened to mom. She just sleeps and sleeps. She doesn't say anything. And Miss Taylor, the neighbor, isn't here. She went to her sister's, and I'm very scared. All right, wait, I'll get dressed, close the store, and we'll go to your home. Sophia already understood what had happened to the boy's mother, and leaving a seven-year-old in such a situation was unthinkable. Since there were no adults around, she had to take care of Rick. She quickly went to the house, where she immediately realized that Rick's mother had likely passed away, probably in her sleep. The woman called an ambulance and the police, took Rick to the kitchen, also found the neighbor's phone and called her. Everyone arrived almost simultaneously. The deceased's body was examined and taken away. The police officer took statements from Sophia and Mrs. Taylor. Somehow with the help of the medics calming down and putting the grief-stricken Rick to sleep, the women sat in the kitchen, trying to come to terms with what they had just experienced. Oh Grace, my poor dear, you never recovered, and the little boy wasn't able to lift you up, Mrs. Taylor wiped away tears. What happened to her? Cancer Sophia asked with tears in her eyes. Something with her heart. A serious illness I can't remember exactly. She couldn't even give birth, but then she decided to, just to keep her husband. They lived together for about five years. At first, things were good, they loved each other. But then, he was about to leave when he found out Grace was sick and wouldn't have children. A husband loves a healthy wife, you know. So she decided to have a child, but as soon as she gave birth, her health worsened. Taking care of the baby was difficult, and she could barely walk. Well, her mother was alive back then, when Sophia's mother died, the husband left, and Sophia loved him so much. She was so devastated that it made her condition worse. I told her a long time ago, get treatment, foolish woman, get treatment in case something happens, the child will be left alone, so small. Did she really refuse treatment? How is that possible? Well, how could she refuse? It was a serious illness, and the treatment was no joke, you know? medications were expensive and various procedures, she needed to stay in the hospital and go for rehabilitation. But who would take care of the child? She hardly had any relatives left. I couldn't take him in either I'm nobody to him. I'm a stranger. I go to bed at night, and whether I'll wake up in the morning I don't know. 
Sometimes you think, why did she give birth if she was so sick? But apparently Grace really wanted to become a mother. The boy is good, of course, but now he'll end up in orphanages, boarding schools. And there, who knows who will raise him, not to mention that he's alone, no relatives, no siblings. What kind of life is that for an orphan? Does Grace have any brothers or sisters? Anyone? I haven't seen anyone. She didn't have friends either. She never worked. Hardly went out of the house, only talked to me. I guess I'm the one to deal with funerals. I need to inform her ex-husband. He should help, at least for the sake of the child. And take care of Rick. After all, he's his son. Where can we find this husband? He sent child support, but not always. Grace and her son lived on a pension and subsidies. It seems he went somewhere, and he seems to have another family now. He last saw Rick about three years ago, they probably won't recognize each other. Well, I'll help with the funeral, we'll do it together. Unfortunately, I have some experience too. Did you bury relatives? You can't get any closer than that. I buried my son five years ago. He had cancer. Only two years old. We couldn't do anything he burned out in a few months. She covered her face with her palms, even though there were no more tears. Then she straightened up decisively. I'll try to adopt Rick at least. What do you think, will it work? It's better than a foster home. Of course it's better, Mrs. Taylor perked up. It would be very good for Rick if he could be adopted, but he has no family left, and can you handle it alone? Of course he's a smart boy, he'll be going to school soon. Financially I can manage, and in a foster home. It's such a trauma for a child. Indeed, he loved his mother very much, but maybe he'll get used to you. After all, he ran to you right away when trouble happened, and he told me how you gave him a cake. He treated me too, he and Grace made me eat, said the cake was magical. He said, Miss from the store has a kind heart, so your heart will heal too. Oh, Grace, she didn't even live to be 40, poor thing. And how beautiful she was in her youth. The women cried, then began to prepare for the funeral. While searching for the necessary documents, orphaned Rick woke up. Mrs. Taylor left the room, and Sophia sat next to the boy and hugged him. I believe so much that your cake would help, but it wasn't magical. Mom still passed away. Is she with the angels now? Yes, my dear, the cake was magical, but its magic wasn't enough to give your mommy the strength to resist. When the angels called her, she went. Now, nothing will hurt her anymore, and don't think she left you. Moms never leave forever, I can assure you. She'll always be nearby, always helping you and taking away all the troubles. Is it true? Mom used to say she often asked for help from her grandma, her mom, who passed away when I was little. Yes, exactly. And now they're together, loving and watching over you. Sophia struggled to hold back tears, not knowing how to console a child who hadn't fully grasped the horror of what had happened. Grandma didn't help Mom. Will I live with Mrs. Taylor now? The illness was stronger, unfortunately. Here's what I suggest, Rick, you can live with me. Would you mind? At the store? Well, why? I only work at the store, but I live in an apartment. I have a spare room there, she paused. That room was meant for her son, who never lived a day in it, either sleeping next to his parents or in the hospital, from where he left forever. The room remained empty. Sophia had never entered it. Now she would have to clean it up. Why? I mean, will I be like your son anyway? Why not? You have a mom, even if she's in heaven, and we'll just be friends. You can call me Miss Sophia. You see, Missy's Mrs. Taylor might not be able to keep you. She's elderly, with a small pension. We can visit her when you want, and you can take anything from here that reminds you of your mom. The room where you'll live is entirely empty. There's enough space for everything. If you won't hit me, and make me call you mom, then I agree. Mom will still be my mom, right? Of course, that's what I'm saying, and hitting. How did that idea come to your mind? Do I look like someone who hits people? Never. So do we have a deal? Then I agree. 
Some lady already came to us when mom was very sick, saying I'd be better off in an orphanage. But I don't want to go anywhere. You'll be fine in my home, I promise. But will mom never come back? The boy asked in despair. Well, even if she's sick, even if she always lies down as long as she's with me. I love her. I need her so much. Buried in the pillow, the boy cried convulsively. Sophia cried too. She understood his feelings perfectly. Five years ago, she was pleading with the heavens to bring back her son, sick or not, just bring him back. Shortly before her tragedy, she saw a TV show about a cunning fraud who promised to revive deceased relatives and loved ones for large sums. She never believed in such possibilities for a minute, but if that man hadn't been arrested, she would have found him and begged for her son's return. Rick, my boy, don't speak like that. Everything happened the way it happened. Forgive me, my dear, but no one can change anything. Mrs. Taylor watched them from the doorway, silently crying. Even the old woman had no words capable of easing this sorrow. The next morning, two women and neighbor and a casual acquaintance took charge of organizing the funeral. From a technical standpoint, it turned out simpler than feared. A kind lady from the funeral home, dressed in black, and with a professionally mournful expression, changed to a businesslike one when she learned that Sophia and Mrs. Taylor weren't related to the deceased, they were given a price list of services, the opportunity to choose everything for the upcoming ceremony, and an appointed time. The most dreadful part was preparing the child for the final farewell to his mother. Even thinking about how it would go was frightening. Mrs. Taylor even suggested not taking the boy to the farewell, and Sophia agreed. Indeed, let him remember his mother, even if she was sick and weak, but alive and loving. How difficult it would be for him to watch the coffin with his dearest person drifting into the unknown. It was decided to cremate Grace. I remember how in our village they buried a young woman, and a similar boy was left behind. Many years have passed, but his cries still echo in my ears. I've never heard anything more terrifying, but he had his father, aunts, and grandmothers around while here. No matter who we are, the we are strangers. The only difference is that there's no one left behind. This question was unexpectedly resolved by Rick himself. He seriously declared, I will also go to say goodbye to my mom. I won't cry, I'll just say goodbye and tell her not to forget me and indeed, he behaved surprisingly composed. Standing on a special bench, the boy leaned towards the lifeless face and whispered something to his mom, kissed her cold cheek, and stepped back, wiping away his tears. He didn't see the rest. Only a few neighbors, Mrs. Taylor and Sophia bid farewell to Grace on her final journey. Oh, he'd better have cried, sighed Mrs. Taylor. Does it really not hurt mom anymore? Rick quietly asked Sophia on the way back. No, dear. And she can be at peace for you. You're a rare good boy. But no matter how good a seven-year-old boy is, he cried bitterly, packing his things in the room he had to leave forever. With tears in his eyes he entered his new dwelling, where there was not even a trace of his forever departed mother. Don't cry, Rick Sophia comforted him. We'll hang mom's portrait on the wall, and she'll always be with you. Okay, okay, it's just a pity that she won't really be there, and no magic will help. Sophia still had to formalize the adoption of the child, which turned out to be the most challenging, despite no apparent obstacles. The notorious bureaucratic machine could find various ways to separate the orphaned child from the lonely woman he had grown attached to. Sophia indeed had a hard time but in the end, everything went successfully. Soon Rick might not have worried about his future, but the past no, it kept reminding itself. The new year, the suddenly formed little family, was met quietly and sadly. They entered it already changed. And if Sophia found meaning in life, Rick lost too much to childishly rejoice in the Christmas tree, new toys and treats. His gaze was constantly shadowed by the thought that his mom would never see all this, smile at the new spring, go to the sea with him, or take him to school. However, by his first day of school he had matured somewhat, and perhaps he managed to distance himself enough from the past not to dwell on his irreparable loss. Before September 1st the boy who used to call her Mrs. 
Sophia suddenly said you know I'll call you mom now. After all you adopted me, so that's how it is. Besides all the kids in school will have moms and I'll have an aunt, everyone will ask questions, what's good about that? She hugged the boy. My clever one. You are my son, my most beloved son. How else should you call me if not mom and indeed, there were no unnecessary questions. And won't my real mom be upset Rick whispered. Because I remember and love her too, I think not. Maybe she'll even be happy that her son is not living with a stranger aunt but with a mom, the one who loves him like a real mother. I love you too, the boy said very quietly. I don't know whom I love more, maybe equally don't think about that. Can love be measured? Sophia was very cautious with her new son. She rejoiced at every smile, every success in school, but feared the approach of the boy's next birthday, and even more dreaded the advent of that fateful date when he became an orphan, and the New Year holidays. Would these festive dates remind him each time of the most dreadful days of his life? How to avoid it? She even contemplated seeing a child psychologist, but her trust in people of that profession was undermined by her own tragedy. After the death of her son and divorce from her husband she herself, tormented, would have sought help. But either she didn't find the right psychologist or wasn't ready for self-reflection perhaps she needed to go through it on her own. In short, after visiting the specialist things only got worse, she decided not to subject Rick to such trials. After all, they say that a child's psyche is more flexible. They quickly forget about troubles, especially if they receive enough new impressions. Sophia made every effort to ensure that these experiences were as abundant as possible. Indeed, Rick's periods of sadness were becoming shorter. He genuinely enjoyed everything new. He made friends at school, eagerly told his mom about his teacher and school days. Rick, your birthday is coming up soon. How would you like to celebrate, and who would you like to invite? I want to celebrate it happily and invite about five people. Well, I would invite more, even the whole class and not just ours, but where would we fit so many people? Well, anyway. There it is again, a cloud of sadness. Rick remembered his mom. He remembered himself alone in front of the pastry shop. Actually, you know, mom, I would love to celebrate it just with you. It's our holiday first and foremost, right? We met on my birthday and I immediately felt that you were not a stranger to me. And I always thought of you as my own. I regretted not knowing your address, fearing I might never see you again. But could we ever part forever being mother and son? They celebrated the birthday joyfully with their closest friends and of course a large beautiful cake, but between that day and December 31st, another date loomed a black one that couldn't be forgotten just like the little grave at the crematorium cemetery. Grace's urn was buried there. Sophia took care of a small but beautiful monument. They visited the cemetery several times, with Rick and Mrs. Taylor. Is Sophia getting used to you, Mrs. Taylor asked. Getting used to? She started calling me mom, although she doesn't forget Grace. Well, I wish you both all the best. Remembering is good, but tearing your soul apart unnecessarily is not, I think. The sad date approached, and Sophia didn't know what to do. Rick remembered it himself. You know, Mom, soon that day when? Well, you remember. Of course. Maybe we should go to the cemetery, bring flowers, and then go to church. Sound good. Of course I miss Mom a little, let her know that. They went to the cemetery and then to the church. The boy didn't cry, although he was sad and thoughtful. You know, Mom, I think she's happy now, that's why I don't want to cry. She did it so we could be together so I wouldn't end up in an orphanage. And now she's glad that everything is good for me, and I have a mom again. I'll always be afraid of this day. You won't die. Right? Because I don't need another mom ever. I could never love another. I won't die. Before you came I often wanted to die but now I know why I want to live. Let's not be afraid anymore. Okay. I'll try. I'll try very hard not to be sad and not to be afraid. Just if something hurts, go to the doctor right away. I'm already big you can leave me alone but not for long of course, never forever please. And I'll definitely become a doctor so that no one's moms die anymore. 
and now they were busy preparing for the new year. Rick helped his mom decorate the pastry shop for the holiday and even came up with designs for New Year's cakes, showing considerable talent as a confectioner and designer. Cakes are not magical, he reasoned, but still wonderful. Maybe they'll help someone a little. Of course. They make the holiday even brighter and more pleasant. In a way, you and I give joy to people. It's great. It's a small miracle. It became a not-so-small one for me, Rick suddenly reflected. If I hadn't looked at that cake back then, you wouldn't have recognized me, and where would I be? Probably in an orphanage. Do they give cakes for New Year's there? I think so. They take good care of children now, but I can't imagine what it's like for those poor kids. You know what? Let's send some cakes and pastry some orphanage so that everyone has enough. Hooray! What a great idea, Mom! There definitely won't be enough of those there, and we'll send them, and all the kids will be happy. Sophia began searching for an orphanage and finding out the conditions under which their gift would be accepted. She thought about the poor children who had yet to meet their moms and dads. Of course cakes wouldn't help but maybe a miracle would happen in their lives. After all, Sophia and Rick wished for it. They put their sincere wish for happiness into every piece, and who knows, maybe orphans will eventually part with their loneliness. Dear friends, I wrote this story thinking about my grandson, who died at the age of five from blood cancer. If you liked the story, subscribe to my channel, click the thumbs up button, and be sure to share your opinion in the comments. I sincerely wish you all the best, robust health, peaceful skies overhead, and see you in the next story.